Never use but or however. No matter how much you empathise with someone, if you follow up your positive sounding statement with words like but or however, it will negate everything prior. Before you know it, you're arguing with each other. It doesn't have to be like that, folks. Welcome back to this weekly edition every Tuesday of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, President of Dale Carnegie Training Japan. We are coming to you today from the Mochizuki Room in our High Performance Center in Minatoku, the hottest business location in Tokyo. Well, where is this cutting edge for all of us? The quality of our people is the cutting edge for success in Japan. In this show, I will stimulate your thinking about ramping up your business, bringing you insights from the best training organization on the planet, provide you with the highest quality Japan information, motivate you to motivate yourself and motivate those around you, help you to shoot the lights out at results time. I don't want to just help you to succeed in your business. I want you to dominate. Before we get into this week's topic, here is what caught my attention lately. Japanese men and women ranked second in the world in average life expectancy in 2016 after setting new longevity records for five straight years according to the Health, Labor and Welfare Ministry. Men climbed to second from fourth place with an average life expectancy of 80.98 years. Shall we round that up to 81? For women, they are still in second place with 87.14 years. Hong Kong leads with 81.32 for men and 87.34 for women. The ministry attributes this improvement in progress to medical treatment and drugs more health-conscious lifestyles, and fewer people committing suicide. Japan has 65,692 centenarians at September 2016. How about you? Do you want to be living to 100 or longer? This is episode number nine, and we are talking about how to disagree agreeably. Sore de wa ikimashou, so let's get going. It's inevitable. At some point, Disagreements are going to come up in the workplace. Power struggles, political plays, sectionalism, siloism. The list goes on regarding sources of organisational conflict. As we all know, disagreements can get heated quickly and it can be difficult to put aside our opinions and biases in order to handle the situation diplomatically. We can get locked into positions and we regret what we said later. Powerfully motivated people often have powerful egos. And when conflicts arise, teamwork can be compromised. If we become one team against their team, that would be bad, except, hey, we're all working for the same organization here. Why would we want to do that? We've conveniently forgotten all about our competitors in the market as we turn on each other. This is not a winning formula. Positive internal collaboration is a product of the culture created in the organization and needs to be built and rebuilt all the time. It doesn't have to be a winner takes all and the losers are vanquished in a battle of wills and egos. There are several tried and true methods to disagree agreeably with colleagues and get the issues out on the table but still Preserve the teamwork. What would that something that would be worthwhile pursuing? Does that sound good? The opportunity cost of wasting energy fighting each other and not winning in the market is huge. We should stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Let's become a united team 
that allows many viewpoints and alternative ideas. Sounds good, except most organizations have no idea how to do that. Here are some ideas on how to navigate a disagreement in an empathetic manner while presenting your point of view. One, give the benefit of the doubt. Don't immediately jump to conclusions, even if you disagree with someone. Be generous with others. Hear them out. You may have more in common than you initially thought. We are not perfect. We don't have all the possible information or all of the possible angles to view an issue. Instead of concentrating on defending what we think, we should start with an open mind that there are many paths to the mountaintop. We may be wrong. And wouldn't we want to have the latest and best information available as we duke it out in the marketplace with our competitors? Two, listen to learn and understand. Be an engaged listener. Make sure you are listening on an empathetic level instead of just pretending to listen. We do this, don't we? By gathering all the facts about the other person's point of view, you will be able to deliver your counterpoint in a diplomatic manner. We need to switch gears from what we usually do. We're often notorious interrupters, jumping in, finishing off others' sentences, or just talking over the top of them to thrust our opinion forward. We have trouble maintaining our listening capability when our brain is awash with what we want to say. Our own internal conversation is all-encompassing, roaring, and it is effectively drowning out the points being made by the other person. We need to be better at listening to others before we shoot our mouths off. It should be done in this order. Ear, brain, mouth. Not ear, mouth, brain. Number three, Use a cushion. This is inserting a little break in the proceedings so we can think before we speak. Acknowledge the other person's point of view and relate to their emotions through empathetic listening. How do we do that? We can use uh, cushion statements such as, I hear what you're saying and what you're saying is important. Or, I understand your point of view to demonstrate that you understand and care about their feelings. As I said, it is important to wait until they have finished speaking before we respond. I know, I know, this might feel like it's an absolutely painful process and excruciating, but do it. Having exercised some patience to hear them out, now we bring in the cushion. This is a great little interregnum to allow us some thinking time before we go into our response. Our immediate first response is usually not our most considered or best response. It can often be an emotional response as well. Cushion, then respond. The results are enormously different. It takes practice and it won't come naturally, but the rewards are vast. Number four, we'll be coming up after the break. If you want to become skilled at dealing with people, then sign up for the Dale Carnegie course. Fully road tested for the last 100 years. This course is super popular globally and in Japan too. We've been teaching this for over 50 years here. Improve your ability with people. Really ramp up your communication and leadership skills. Grow your confidence and end your stress. Contact us to do the Dale Carnegie course now in either Japanese or English. Welcome back. Number four is never use but or however. No matter how much you empathize with someone, if you follow up your cushion statement with words like but or however, it will negate everything prior. You lose credibility with the person you're disagreeing with and it is unlikely that they will really seriously take your viewpoint into consideration from now on. We're all trained like hawks to watch for body language guiding us as to whether they agree with what we are saying or not. 
So we have to make sure we are not giving off a negative vibe without even being aware of it. We are also trained to listen for keywords that tell us whether we have an argument on our hands or not. Words like but, however, in reality, etc., set off alarms in our heads. We immediately arm ourselves for counterattack when we hear those words. Sun Tzu's advice in the art of war was to win without fighting. So let's do that. Instead of words that contradict the other person's opinion, original idea, statement, use words like and or insert a pause instead. Here's an example. That is a good idea, but we have to look at the budget ramifications. This sounds negative and unhelpful. Try this instead. That is a good idea, and we will need to look at the budget ramifications. The impression we get from the second version is more positive and hopeful. Just change one word and the inference is vastly different. Number five is state your opinion with evidence. Opinions are easy to refute, but facts are difficult to argue with. By backing up your point of view with evidence, you come across as more credible and can gain valuable leverage in a disagreement. By utilising evidence, you may even be able to bring someone over to your line of thinking. It is also a smart move to bring in the facts in a subtle way. Rather than using facts as a mallet to belt them with, offer some consideration such as, I may not have all the facts, but I was aware that this was the case. How does that correspond with what you've experienced? Always be aware that people don't like to lose face. Be embarrassed, be humiliated, or to feel slighted. We know this, but in the heat of the moment, we may go too far. Ramming facts down their throat may mean you are correct. This may make you feel good, but you potentially create an enemy for life, nevertheless. We get into trouble when the message is delivered in the wrong way. So... Try these ideas and become much better with holding your position, being heard and retaining the relationship with people who disagree with you. Keep pushing hard with us here at the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Subscribe on YouTube. Share it with your family, friends and colleagues. Become a regular. Thank you for watching and remember to hit the subscribe button. Our website details are on screen now, japan.dalekani.com. There's awesome value, check it out. In episode 10, we are talking about Japanese elites who can't cut it. Ever met or seen a supposed elite member of the Japanese society who was a bit underwhelming? The paths to elite status in Japan are a bit different from other countries. Find out how and why next week. So, Yoroshiku, onegai itashimasu. Please join me for the next episode of the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Until then, create seriously massive levels of success. We are here to help you do that. Dale Cutting Edge Training Japan has only one direction in mind for you and your business, and that is up.